after the biggest ever A-League women's season, comprising of 12 teams, full home and away for the first time, a Premier's plate race that went down to the final game and an exhilarating first final last night, we have arrived at the second elimination final of 2023-24. These are the moments the players dream of throughout the season. Forget everything that has gone before. Seasons, careers and legacies will all come down to a couple of knockout games in autumn. We'll take a look at how the two sides line up in this all or nothing clash now. For Melbourne victory, there are two changes to the team that defeated Sydney FC last game, both enforced. The inform Emily Gilnick was unable to overcome the calf injury that took her out of Matilda's contention. She's replaced by Leah Privatelli. Meanwhile, Sarah D'Apollonia is ill. She is replaced by the experienced Elise Kellon Knight in midfield. Emma Checker is in line to make 150 league appearances if she comes off the bench today. For the visitors, the Central Coast Mariners, there are three changes after their draw with Western United. Chinese international Ergamal and defender Ash Erlen come back into the starting side, replacing Peter Tremis and Tiana Karambasis, respectively. The final change is between the sticks. Casey Dumont replaces Sarah Langdon to add an extra layer of intrigue to this clash. Well, the fans are out in their droves this afternoon. It's a glorious day in Melbourne, 19 degrees and clear. You can't ask for much better weather to watch football at the home of the Matildas. That grandstand feeling nicely. We'll see plenty of fans on the hill on the opposite side as well. There aren't too many better ways to spend a Sunday afternoon. Of course, Melbourne Victory fans in their droves. Mariners fans as well making the trip down. Here come the two sides out of the tunnel for what some is the biggest game of their lives. And for others, including many in that Melbourne Victory lineup, well, it's just another season. Plenty of experienced faces there. And there's a few of them for the Mariners. Casey Dumont, you wonder what will be going through her mind facing her former team. And Courtney Newbon as well. Well, at the beginning of the season, she was starring for the Mariners. She signed at the last minute on an injury replacement contract for Sarah Langman. And now, after injuries to both Miranda Templeman and Lydia Williams for victory, she finds herself in goals in Melbourne. There's no bad blood towards the Mariners, she says, but in a game that has the potential to go all the way to penalties, her role in this game is such an intriguing subplot, and so too is the role of her opposite keeper, Casey Dumont. After six years at Melbourne victory and four previous seasons working with Jeff Hopkins at the Brisbane Raw, Victory chose not to renew her contract in somewhat controversial circumstances after she was signed by Hawthorne to play in the AFLW. Of the seven penalty shootouts in A-League women's history, Dumont has been involved in four and won all of them. There is historically no better goalkeeper in A-League women's finals football than the Mariners shot stopper. She'll be out to prove that yet again today. Well, finals time for the referees as well. The central official is Rebecca Durkow this afternoon. She's assisted by Paula Orlandi and Delphina Shakespeare. The fourth official today is Caitlin Williams. And Jeff Hopkins, speaking of experience in finals, there is arguably no A-League women's coach you want more than Jeff Hopkins. His teams have played in 17 finals games and he's won 12 of them. Six of those with Melbourne victory. This is a side with a knack for big games and Hopkins says that he spent the international break reminding them of just how good they can be. And no doubt reminding themselves of that in the huddle at the moment. In contrast, Emily Husband, this is certainly the biggest game in her young coaching career so far. She was an assistant at Canberra in 2021 when they made finals and has coached Sydney University to a championship in the NPL, but it is her first experience as a head coach in the top flight in a knockout game. Her team has been organised, well-drilled and effective this season. Her job, as well as the job of the experienced players in that lineup, is to keep the team calm and focused on the job at hand. Speaking of experience, Elise Kellon-Knight 
in midfield for Melbourne victory. This is a game that has the potential to go all the way. Very difficult to separate these two sides. Of course, the two games that they played this season, victory with the slight advantage. They did beat the Mariners 2-1 in November. The game in February was a one-all draw. But very difficult to tell on form lines who will come out on top this afternoon. We are underway in this elimination final at the home of the Matildas, the home side, Melbourne Victory, in their navy kit going from right to left on your screen. The Mariners in their yellow going from left to right. Intriguing contest, so many subplots in front of us. We get to find out how this game will play out. Again, a glorious day. Perfect conditions for football. 90 minutes ahead of us, and of course, if required, 30 minutes of extra time and maybe even penalties as victory attempting to advance forward and have the early advantage. Mariners in a spot of bother on that side. Badawiya getting involved, trying to take the ball away. She goes to ground. Chidiak, though, has come away with it. Alex Chidiak. Such a dynamic player in midfield. Last season's Julie Dolman medalist, of course. Victory will restart from the back. Kayla Morrison. Along to Tori Hansen, the American. Out wide to Nash. Happy to just keep possession. In some ways, this game is a contrast of styles. Victory will likely have more possession. They'll likely look to keep the ball along the deck a little bit more than Mariners. More attuned in counter-attacking football. You can see from the passing accuracy stats of both teams. Mariners players certainly lower than victory players, and it's not so much a comment on the individual ability as much as the style of play. Here's Gomez driving through midfield. Battle we up. Now in space. Ergamal. Has she stayed on side, Ergamal? Flag did stay down. She wasn't able to get the ball away from under her feet, though. And former Mariners keeper Newborn comes away with it. Take another look at that opportunity. Nash did really well tracking back and ensuring that Ergamal wasn't able to get a side on goal. Leah Privatelli starting this afternoon. Such a stalwart for Melbourne victory. Of course. Many Victory fans would have loved to see Emily Gilnick out there, the informed Gilnick, but suffered a calf injury during a Matildas call-up. But here's the Mariners. Ergamal takes a shot on her right. Good save by Newborn. She had to be sharp. Ergamal was dancing into the penalty area. Couldn't quite get the power, maybe, to challenge Newborn too much, but good early signs for the Mariners. Here come Victory now, looking to fashion an opportunity of their own, and it'll go all the way through to Dumont. It'd have to be Victory fans in the crowd with very mixed feelings seeing Dumont on the pitch for the Mariners. A club legend for Victory, remembering that elimination final last season, the clip that went viral, Casey Dumont taking the first penalty and then saving against Katie Bowen in the penalty shootout that Victory ended up winning. Of course, they fell the next week to Sydney FC in the semi-final. But plenty of finals experience in their side. Sharp contrast to the Mariners. Ball looking for Rachel Lowe, who's taken up the centre forward role in Gionic's absence today. Wardlow keeping it along the deck. Ball played up the line. Mariners again in space. That's Kaya Simon making a run into the box, but the ball not delivered to her. It's played to Annabelle Martin instead, but Chidiak getting back and defending well. So BD Goad now has an opportunity to run at the Mariners. Nice little one-two 
with Chidiak. Kellen Knight getting involved as well, but it is the Mariners who come away with it. Kai Simon attempted a turn to play it into the path of Batawea, perhaps. Victory defence, smart to it. Here's another look at this Ergamal opportunity. It was a lovely ball through. And then Ergamal managed to find space past Hansen. Just couldn't quite get enough power on it. The direction was good. The idea was good. It's been dangerous this season. Ergamal, the 27-year-old, eight goals in her 22 appearances. Long throw from Martin. Kept in. No, not quite in the end. Victory will have the throw. Bianchi Galich did her best, but just wasn't able to keep it in on that occasion. She's the only player in the Mariners' side that has started every game, Galich. So that's an example of the importance of her to this side in midfield. Such an engine alongside Isabel Gomez as well. Morrison, victory's captain, seeing some space and driving into it. Chidiak will be forced back by the Mariners' midfield. Murphy's come back to cover Morrison at centre back after Morrison's little adventure. They'll resume normal positions after that. Kellon Knight, nice touch and nice ball through to Murphy. He'll play it straight out wide for Pripitelli. Well, she can't get past Martin. That'll be played out for the first corner of this afternoon, and it's in the home side's favour. Leah Pripitelli to her 96th A-League women's appearance this afternoon, all for Melbourne victory. That shows you just what a club legend that she is. Bidigo delivers the corner towards the front post, cleared away decisively by the Mariners. All the way back to Nash. Here goes Jess Nash, the young Matilda's captain. Her ball couldn't find the feet of Goad on that occasion. throw into the box looking for low finds low looking to fashion something here victory their first clear cut chance perhaps they go just forced all the way back to Alana Murphy Jamila Rankin the ball through the right left peg on Jamila Rankin she finds Chidiak who squares it and it beat the front post defence of the Mariners. There was no one there for victory on the penalty spot to tuck it away. That's pure determination from Alex Chidiak. She's such a terrier in midfield. Gets plenty of touches on the ball, is constantly involved. It was a nice ball from Rankin, and that's an example of just pure determination from Chidiak. It was low at the front post. She couldn't quite get a touch on it and then goad. Didn't arrive in time. It was well cleared in the end by Paige Haywood for the Mariners. Well, both teams just feeling each other out in these early stages. Victory may be just beginning to enter the ascendancy as Dumont reads the ball well. Of course, a game between fourth and fifth 
on the ladder. Very difficult to separate. And victory may not have been here at all. They relied on a win against Sydney FC in the last game of the season to ensure a finals place. Of course, a dramatic final day that some of the Premier's plate eventually given to Melbourne City after that result. 4-0 to victory over Sydney. Must have certainly been a bittersweet feeling for victory. On one hand, securing finals places. On the other, giving the Premier's plate to your city rivals in Melbourne City after they defeated Perth in a game that began about half an hour after the Big Blue finished. And you can see now that possession stat, 71% for Melbourne victory. On one hand, it is what you would expect with the style of these two sides. Mariners more than happy to just sit back and wait for their opportunities. That passing accuracy again, another example of what we're seeing on the pitch. 89% to victory. You can expect to see that drop a little bit as the game goes on, but it is likely to stay in the mid-80s for victory. Mariners definitely hang around the mid-70s for that passing accuracy percentage. The result of a more direct style of play. Nicely played. For the Mariners, here comes Bryson on this right edge, looking to whip in a ball, perhaps catch out the keeper. And that was so close to opening the scoring. Kaya Simon couldn't quite direct her header on goal. It was a floater, it confused everyone. Courtney Newborn couldn't read it in the sun. And Simon looked like she lost it a little bit in the sun as well. She got her head to it, but not with enough power to direct it on target. Now that could be a factor in this half and perhaps in the second half with the change of ends as well. That sun, it's very difficult to read for keepers, but now victory for a chance immediately. The ball cut out by Dumont before he could reach low. You can expect the Mariners now so maybe try a few more of those floating balls. Simon going central to Ergamal and back out to Bryson. If she can reel it in, she can't. So it'll be a goal kick for Newbon. Faye Bryson, two assists this season for the English woman, formerly of Everton, Bristol City and Reading. First season in the A-League women's, she's been good. Low, playing a ball through to Chidiak, who finds herself on this left byline once more. And Mariners calmly enough coming away with it. Bryson and Ash Irwin doing the honours. That ball from Irwin though, not going where it was directed and victory have it straight back low. Can't get through the defence. Galich, it's about a way up. And a way against Nash. Nash does well. Looks like Ergamal is playing as the furthest forward player when the Mariners are out of possession as that pressing player. He's Gallich with a long shot, bounce, and Newborn not completely convincing with the gather, but ended up taking it without too much trouble. Rankin on the charge, good tackle by opposite number Bryson, who comes away with it well. Simon into midfield, Gallich, battle way up. She's got Ergamal ahead of her. Roller battle way up. Can't beat Kellen Knight and goes to ground and wins a foul in an advantageous position. Well, that was unnecessary because the combination of Nash and Kellen Knight had stopped 
the attacking play. In the end, just leaving out a foot and committing the foul is given the Mariners a good opportunity. We'll take a look at this again. Kellen Knight had done all the hard work. And then it was Nash who stuck out a boot and brought Badawiya down and committed the foul. Nash only 19 years of age. It's a 58th A-League women's appearance though, so very experienced in terms of this competition. Well, this is definitely shooting range. It's Isabel Gomez standing over it, and Bianchi Galic, who goes low. It's cut out by the victory wall, but now an opportunity to shoot, and it's come away to Kaya Simon, who is offside, so victory will have a free kick, and they've gotten away with one there, Melbourne victory. That was a dangerous St. Pete's chance. Newborn looks like she is really struggling with that sun. You see keepers, Casey Dumont actually is a great exponent for it, for wearing the cap in sunny conditions. Newborn has opted not to this afternoon. That could definitely be a factor in this half. Chidiak tries the back heel. Bill Martin is there. Martin with the quick release. Ergamal plays it to Simon. Simon's got Gallitz charging up her inside. She'll try and find Ergamal again. Ergamal to square it. No one at the back post. And Beatty Goad tracks the run of Br Bryson and is able to give Jamila Rankin the ball. It's been great so far, Rankin. Rachel Lowe now in space. Rachel Lowe needing support here, or will she go herself? Still Lowe plays the ball across. Privatelli with the shot. And Dumont palms it over. The best chance of the game for Melbourne victory so far. A great ball from Lowe to find the feet of Privatelli, who had to shoot from there, but Dumont one of the best shot stoppers in this competition, more than equal to it. And the opportunity not yet over, home side with a corner. Lionel Murphy will take from this side. The right footer, so the in-swinging corner. They'll likely look to crowd Dumont, create pressure. Murphy's corner at the front post. It's out for another corner. Bryson was the player who was there to head it away. Well, may have come off Martin. But Bryson in the wars as part of that defensive unit. Here goes Murphy again. Take two. Back post this time. Dumont punches away. Victory still retaining possession. Can they make something out of this second phase? They can't. Ball played straight back to the Mariners. And now a break. Ergamal against Rankin. Still Ergamal. She's got Badawiya on her inside. She'll play it to her. Simon, can she get there? She can, but she's forced to turn around by Morrison. Faye Bryson now to take the shot, but Chidiak is there to block. Bryson to Simon. Faye Bryson. Back to Simon. Was she onside? Doesn't matter in the end because it's shielded well by Goat. Another opportunity, another look at that Mariner's opportunity rather. Well, Badawea just poked it through. A little bit too much on it though for Simon who, to be fair to her at 32, probably isn't as quick as she once was, especially after the injury problems that she's endured over the last couple of seasons. This is her 10th appearance this season. Simon struggled for the first half, recovering from that ACL and the complications that came with it. Oh, Rachel, though, attempting to play the ball through there, but Dumont was alert. 
read the ball well. Low. We're going to get more and more involved. Appeals for a foul, not given. Long ball looking for Ergamal. The plan really does seem to be to win the ball and hit Ergamal as quick as possible. Simon trying to do so right there, but is cut out well by Morrison. And that time she just hits it as far away as possible. The victory captain. turn from Badawiya. Leaves Nash in her wake. She'll square it, but Tori Hansen is there. Only put it out for a corner. So the Mariners now with an opportunity from a corner of their own. Mariners now will line up for this corner. Annabelle Martin with two hands in the air. Green swinging as well. They'll crowd the keeper as well. Martin delivers towards the front post, headed away by Rankin. The away side still on the ball though. Although a slip from Gomez allows Goad to get on the ball. But desperate defending. The ball has come out to Chidiak. Alex Chidiak thought about the early shot. Still going here, Chidiak needs support. She's all on her own out on this left-hand side. Wardlow's done well to keep her out there. Looking to pull out all the tricks. Wonderful connection with Goad. But what a challenge from Isabel Gomez. No nonsense from the midfielder. And she is number one in the league for tackles one for a reason. Jasmine Wardlow here did really well. Just a shepherd, Chidiak. Chidiak managed to find Goad and then wonderful challenge by Gomez. So a cascade of set pieces here over the last few minutes. Solana Murphy with another chance to deliver. It's headed away at the front post by Bryson and it'll be take two once again. They really do look to be targeting that front post. And certainly, if any coach knows about the strengths and weaknesses of Casey Dumont, it is Jeff Hopkins. Murphy again, front post again. Morrison got there and is able to play it back out to Murphy, who will deliver another cross in. Appeals for handball by the crowd did look like the Mariners player had her hand tucked by her side. But it's victory again on the ball. Murphy looking to take on Faye Bryson. Gets the ball in towards the back post and Dumont punches away. A foul given to the Mariners in the process. Privatelli is down as is Annabelle Martin. That was brave goalkeeping from Dumont. Murphy, a great ball in and Dumont had to punch it away. Vitelli almost getting there, couldn't do so. And it's Annabelle Martin who is slow to her feet after that challenge. Of course, Martin had four seasons with Melbourne Victory between 2015 and 19, so she's very familiar with a lot of these players and these surrounds. It would be a good moment for her, a special moment for her to be on the pitch today. Rivitelli, one of those players that she played with during that time. Certainly nothing malicious in that from Privatelli. Everyone involved was going for the ball. Another look at that ball in again. 
Well, it's Dumont who I think probably got the contact on Martin that's floored her there. But both sides happy enough to take the break. Hopkins issuing instructions to BD Goat. Mariners will look to play the ball up the pitch from the back. Well, they can't be dallying on the ball like that. Hayward loses out to Chidiak and now low, looking to advance forward. Jamila Rankin, Beatty Goad. Back to Rankin, left footers on that side for victory. Ball attempted to play through, but that time Hayward is able to clear to the Mariners' advantage. Rankin, though, Made sure that Danawea wasn't able to get onto it. Annabelle Martin is back on the pitch, so good news for the Mariners. Here come victory again. Looking to drive into the penalty area. Murphy with the left-footed cross. Maybe thought about taking the strike, but couldn't get the connection required. Jess Nash's pass intercepted. Ergamal in space. Ergamal, the Chinese international. Badawi is arriving. She'll play it out wide to Gomez instead. On the way back, a ball delivered towards the back post. Badawi was there, but it was really well defended by Rankin, who made sure that she got her body in the way. Badawiya wasn't able to win the header. Simon's ball now. Cleared away well. Actually, Irwin looking to deliver something. Morrison read the bounce well and just hoofs it as far away as possible. That is no nonsense defending, I believe it's called. She's been such a quality defender in this league for the past few seasons, Morrison. The American, of course, has Australian citizenship now, though. There have been some rumours that maybe she would want to change her international allegiance if it did come to that. Foul given against the Mariners here. It's Chidiak, the player, who's down. Gallage just coming in late in the opinion of the referee. Because she's such a tricky player, Chidiak, she does get fouled a lot. It's one of the unfortunate parts of being the kind of technical, tricky midfielder that she is, you do get a few kicks along the way. Irwin with the long free kick, intercepted by Kellon Knight. Now ball through to Lowe. Low on the spin, beats one, shoots. And the follow-up from Chidiak deflected away. Alex Chidiak baffled that that wasn't given as a handball. The Mariners defender had gone down. We'll take a look at this again. It was Irwin who'd gone down low, shoots. And well, we'll have to take another look at that. Her hands were up. Whether or not it hit her hands or her face as she was prone. Let's take a look at this in slow motion. It's difficult to tell. It does look like to me that it was in the face and no contact with the hands. But her hands were up. They were in a position you do not want them to be in that situation. It certainly left her vulnerable to a handball. Low to Chidiak. Privatelli to Chidiak, rather, on that occasion. Not quite coming off as intended. Here come the Mariners on the break. Gallage trying to deliver to Badawea, but cut out very calmly by Hansen. Right. 
victory with more final third entries than the Mariners. It that passes the eye test victory have looked the slightly better side, but the Mariners not short of opportunities of their own. One of those, of course, coming after a Bryson cross. Simon's header not able to be on target. Chidiak copped a fair whack there. The referee said play on. Interestingly, that pass accuracy stat in the final third, while victory of been attacking there as we eavesdrop on very unhappy Jeff Hopkins. Victory haven't quite been as clinical in the attacking third. It could change right now though. Goad cutting inside and back the other way. Beating Goad delivering. Dumont is there at the front post. She has delivered some finals performances for the ages in her career so far. Low making herself a nuisance. Of course, Mariners fans will be hoping that she can replicate some of those performances this afternoon. Here come the Mariners on the attack. Ball out wide to Kai Simon, who shoots first time over the crossbar. It was nicely played by Galich, who's been central to everything this, this game. Nice little outside of the boot pass, and Simon couldn't hit the frame of goal. Of course, Kai Simon, big game experience, a big game player. She's been there, she's done it at club and country. His fans will be hoping that she can do it this afternoon as well. She was part of their inaugural season, of course, in 2008-09. And has now returned after the Mariners' return to the competition. After a long time in the wilderness. They're looking to win their first ever finals game if they can do so today of course a reminder if the teams can't be separated after 90 minutes we will have 30 minutes of extra time and then possibly onto penalties we saw extra time last night of course in the first elimination final the Jets coming up winners in that fixture and that means of course the winner of this contest will play Sydney FC in the semi-final, two-legged affair. Melbourne victory, very familiar with Sydney FC in finals. Having lost to them at the semi-final stage last year, but the two seasons previously, having gotten the better of them in the, in the final. Newcastle, having won yesterday, will play the Premier's Melbourne City. But we are still a long way away from knowing the victor in this clash. Still nil all with just a tick over 10 minutes of regulation time left in the first half. Mariners have had more shots. Victory have probably had the better of the overall play. That is a crunching tackle by Alex Chidiak, and well, she's proclaiming her innocence. But at first glance, it certainly was a foul and maybe lucky to get away with not being booked. Just didn't want to let Bianchi Galich be on her. Very, very late challenge there from Chidiak. Now getting it talking to by the referee, Rebecca Durkow. It's probably saying, I get kicked all the time, is probably what she's trying to say to the referee, but two wrongs don't make a right, Alex. That certainly was a foul. The Mariners with a set piece. Can they fashion something 
in Victory's half. Play it back to Martin. Irwin has her pass blocked, but it comes away to Ergamal regardless. And that time, Beatty Goat is there to cut out the pass. Oh, lovely turn from Galich. Bianchi Galich beats one, beats two, takes the strike. Just wide, appeals for a deflection. And there are appeals that are heated by the referee. It'll be a Mariner's corner. But how good was that from Bianchi Galich? This turn firstly, and then doing Tori Hansen as well. That would have been something for the highlights reel had that flown in. As it is though, the Mariners with another opportunity from a corner. Annabelle Martin to deliver into the mixer. Morrison, though, rises highest and is able to clear. Mariners will keep the ball. Haywood to Kaya Simon, whose ball, well, maybe was meant to the path of Badawia. Maybe it was meant for the on-running Jasmine Wardlow, but either way, went straight into the gloves of Newbon. Lovely ball up the line, searching for the run of Kellen Knight. Up against Gomez. Kellen Knight can't beat her on that occasion. It's now Chidiak on the ball on that far side. Appeals for a handball, and that time is given. It was outside the box, so it'll be a dangerous free kick for victory. Paige Hayward at fault and her arm was away from her body. So well spotted by Durkow, the referee. The left foot of Beatty Goad will take this free kick. It's almost like a short corner from this kind of position. A little bit of a better angle. A few more possibilities as well. Morrison, the obvious target in there, the big centre back. Go delivering. Dumont claims well. It's always difficult for a keeper. You've got players around you, a lot of noise. She's done well to hang on. Nice turn. And the searching ball was too much for Martin on that side. She's got an engine, Annabelle Martin, but even she was never going to reach that one, so victory have the throw. Martin slips here, allowing Kellen Knight an opportunity on the ball, but her pass easily cut out by Wardlow. Seen a few of those today. Home of the Matildas, normally quite a good surface. Of course, the fantastic new facility in the north of Melbourne, in the grounds of the Trobe University. High interception for the Mariners now. There's options in the middle, shooting, finding Ergamal. Well, Ergamal got in the way of her own player there. Although Simon in a great position here. Kaya Simon tries to chop Kayla Morrison. But Morrison stands tall and does a superb job 
in the penalty area. Always dangerous defending in the box. Now there's been a challenge. Badawea and Chidiak have both gone to ground here. And the referee has ruled a foul against Chidiak. And Chidiak just coming in late from behind on Badawea. Gomez firstly did really well to poke the ball through and then Chidiak just on the wrong side of Badawea. Rebecca Turkow just seemed to be saying to her last one after that foul as well, so she might have to be careful. It's been very enthusiastic today, Chidiak. Well, here's another opportunity for the Mariners. Faye Bryson and Isabel Gomez standing over the free kick. It'll be Gomez who will take, delivered into the middle over the head of Asher when the target. Almost these second phases where they've been more dangerous, but it's Victory who calmly have taken the ball away. Chidiak, Kellon Knight, trying to direct traffic the veteran. Goad, Rankin. Back to Kellon Knight, who has beaten Bryson here. Paige Hayward tracking back and is successful. ball that was searching for Simon has just found Beatty Goad. Goad, of course, missed the middle part of the season as part of a placement in her studies to be a doctor. And she's back now, and ever since her return, she's been on fire. She actually scored a brace on her return and hasn't looked back since. Such an important player for this victory side. Of course, if you are wondering, the Mariners wearing black armbands today to acknowledge the victims of the tragic events at Bondi Junction yesterday. So that's the black armbands for the Mariners. Come victory. Beatty Goat again. Whips in a ball with that left foot. It's come out almost to Chidiak. But Gomez is the one who has the ball for the Mariners. She'll play up the line to her midfield partner, Galich. Battle way up. Cleared away by victory again. Mariners just getting little sniffs of opportunities, but nothing clear cut. And now they've lost the ball in a very dangerous situation. Chidiak dragged back by Gomez. And I would be shocked if she doesn't bring out a yellow card here, although it looks like Gomez might get away with that. Dukau just letting her know that that was very borderline again. Very surprised that this has not been adjudged a yellow card offence. Gomez just dragging Chidiak back as she advanced up the pitch. And the result is a free kick. Some sort of hilarity ensuing. Perhaps over the placement of the ball for Murphy. Here goes Alana Murphy with the free kick. Morrison, the hitter, just missing the frame of goal. It was a well-taken free kick from Murphy. We know how dangerous Morrison can be from set pieces. Take a look at this again. She just got behind her. She wasn't quite able to get over the top of the ball, which is what you need to do to control the header. And it went high and wide. 
will still scoreless as we approach the halftime break. Both sides having opportunities. The Mariners hoping to add to another. Martin will deliver in a ball. Simon is there. Morrison just about dealt with it and has come away to go. Oh, lovely from Goad. That'll come up in the personal highlight reel. And again, she's beaten two. She looked to beat three. Couldn't do so. Haywood eventually came away with it. Well, that's an example of the technical ability of Beatty Goad, the three-time Matilda, capped back in 2021. Confirmation of two minutes of stoppage time, so still time for either side to have another opportunity to open the scoring before the break. These home fans will be hoping that that chance is fashioned by the team in navy blue. Victory just looking to keep the ball at the moment. Morrison, long ball up the line, Lowe is there, Lowe is in space but Lowe is offside. The opportunity snuffed out by the offside flag. So it'll be the Mariners who have possession as we tick into the end of this stoppage time. <laughs> Bryson just assessing your options. She'll go nice and long. Ergamal can't keep control. So that is half time at the home of the Matildas in this elimination final. Still scoreless. Both teams have had plenty of opportunities. The best for the Mariners coming off a header from Kaya Simon, but at half time. It's Melbourne victory nil, Central Coast Mariners nil. Well, for a scoreless half, still plenty of highlights. Isabel Gomez, the centre of this one, finding Ergamal, who looked very, very lively, particularly early on. Just not quite able to get the power that she would have liked behind that shot. This one from Bryce and Newborn just lost the ball in the sun. Simon arrived late but didn't arrive in time to really affect where the header was going. This from Privatelli, the best of victories chances. Mitchell Lowe busy as always in the centre. Privatelli's shot well saved by Dumont. And then Kaya Simon, this first time shot after fantastic work from Bianca Galich. Missing the frame of goal. Just didn't get her body over the ball in order to drive it past Newbon. There were plenty of set pieces in the half, and this one from Murphy did find the target Morrison, but Morrison didn't quite jump, didn't quite time her jump correctly and skewed the header wide. So these are the halftime stats. Melbourne victory with more possession, but the Mariners with more shots, both sides with opportunities and looking very, very even at the moment. Well, thanks so much for joining us for that first half and make sure you don't go anywhere because anything could still happen in this elimination final. It's Melbourne victory nil, Central Coast Mariners nil.
Guys, we will get started. We're out just over here. Uh, we're going to get involved. We've got Stephen and Asha who are with me over here. It is the classic crossbar challenge. Now, the winner is going to take home a signed jersey, but the only little interesting fact is it's father and son, so they're both going to win, which is great news, isn't it? Asha, hello. How are you today? So, do you and your dad, do you, do you play a bit of soccer out in the backyard? How's it? So how do you reckon? Are you better than your dad yet? You're better than your dad yet? Alright, very good. Okay, first ball is here. So basically, you've just got to try and hit the crossbar. Hey, make a bit of noise for Asha. Alright, there you go. You've got some excitement behind you. Three, two, one. Give it your best shots. What was the goal? Nicely done. So we'll go three. So Asha, you can go again. Let's do all three. So pop up that spot. Take time. Nice one. A little bit more height on this one, I suppose. Alright, when you're ready, you can go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that was good. He learns quickly. So close. So you got the height. Now just a touch more. Alright, here we go. Three, two, one. Up you go. Oh, make a bit of noise, Mark. That was excellent work. So pretty close, but he was about half a meter under. So Dad, Stephen, now yeah, get the three balls lined up. You can do it slippery out here. That's the one thing. You don't want to slip over. That would be embarrassing. Which you're not going to do. Alright, so we're going to count three. Let's go. Three, two, one. What have you got for us? Ooh, nice. I think I was just as close as Asha. So here we go. What have you got now? <laughs> I think that's it. Go one more time just for fun. See if you can go two from two. That was very nice. Oh, we'll get Asha to go. Yeah, go on. Why not, Asha? Here we go. Get it up there. Get it up there. Oh, all right. And it was good. Hey, one more time for Stephen and Asha down here. They had a bit of fun. Thank you both. So, signed jersey for both of you, okay? So we can share it. You've already got a bit of a signed jersey, so you're going to take another one home. Thanks so much. You had a bit of fun? Thank you, Dad. Well done. Thank you very much. Enjoy the second half. Good stuff. Lovely to meet you both. Great. Go and be a dream there. Great work. Oh, no. 
Okay, as a way spectators must never become violent or antisocial towards another person, including spectators, players, coaches, and match officials, or any person identified engaging in disorderly behaviour or who otherwise causes a disturbance may be evicted from the venue banned from attending future matches. Spectators must not enter the field of play or play in the arena without lawful authority. Significant barriers apply for breaching this condition for potential, including being evicted from the venue and banned from attending future matches. Welcome back to the home of the Matildas in Melbourne's North, where it's Melbourne victory nil, Central Coast Mariners nil at half time. There's been plenty of opportunities so far, and we'll take you through some of those now. Firstly, for the Mariners, Ergamal, very, very busy up top, the Chinese international. She's been playing as the furthest forward attacker for the Mariners just hasn't been able to strike one true. This one from Bryson, a cross in. Kaya Simon just not quite able to get the connection that she needed. Victory had chances of their own. Leah Privatelli, one of their best opportunities after receiving a ball from Rachel Lowe. It was a good save from former Victory goalkeeper, Casey Dumont. Kaya Simon had an opportunity from a similar angle as Privatelli's struck it first time. Couldn't hit the frame of goal. Just got underneath the ball a little bit too much there. The 32-year-old. And then this from a set piece. Kayla Morrison is so dangerous. We know how dangerous she can be. Nine A-League women's goals in her time. Majority of those from set pieces wasn't able to hit the target then. Well, a glorious day in Melbourne. It was a high of 19 degrees, clear skies, plenty of fans enjoying the match from the hill. Lovely picnics going as well as wearing their colours. You always love to see the young ones up and about watching some of their first A-League women's action. Get them in early. They'll become lifelong fans of what is one of the best leagues in the world. There is nothing like watching a sporting event from a hill. It just has some mystique to it. You can get the cheese board out, get the wine out, and enjoy what those fans on screen will be hoping is an away team victory for the Central Coast Mariners. They've shown up in their numbers today, Mariners fans. That's always good to see. They come from everywhere, fans of this league, and have come to Melbourne today to cheer on their team after it was a long absence from the competition. Theoretically, their second finals appearance in a row, if you go all the way back to 2009. This Mariners side have never won a finals match in their history. They'll be looking to do so today. And central to it will be, of course, Casey Dumont. Six years at Melbourne Victory. 
Victory fans here in the north of Melbourne, very familiar with the site of Casey Dumont in goals. The contract not renewed last season after choosing to play for Hawthorne in the AFLW. Instead, she was a mid-season signing for the Mariners, has been competing with Sarah Langman for minutes, but in a finals game, her 18th A-League women's finals game in her career, the equal most of any player ever in the history of this competition. You really cannot go past Casey Dumont. She's already come up big on several occasions today. The players coming out of the tunnel for the second half. The Mariners players being put through their paces. Ali Studiak, Alana Murphy were both central to the action, having a chat there. And take a look at this player comparison between Chidiak and Bianca Galich, the Mariners midfielder. They were having quite the duel in the middle. Galich with four total shots so far, 91% passing accuracy, which is just phenomenal in central midfield. Chidiak at 80% and two duels won for Chidiak. Chidiak to Galich has won. Both arguably lucky to get away with not being booked in that half. It was combative in the center of midfield. And it will no doubt continue to be that way in this second half. The Mariners in their huddle. Dumont's come out with the cap. So she's looking to combat the sun that Newborn struggled with in that half. In the victory huddle. Kayla Morrison, their captain, laying down the law. They know it is all or nothing. There are no take backs in this game. It is an elimination final. It is win or your season is over. Of course, if the teams cannot be separated at the end of this 45 minutes, there will be a period of extra time, 30 minutes in total, and then if required, penalties including last night. 13 A-League Women's Finals games have gone to extra time. Seven, two penalties. Will we see another this afternoon? We're back underway in the second half at the home of the Matildas in this elimination final. Melbourne Victory and the Central Coast Mariners can't be split just yet. There's 45 minutes for someone to make themselves the hero. There's Dumont in the cap, trying to combat that sun that'll be in her eyes from that end. Victory will be hoping to take advantage of that. And it is quite an advantage putting in those high crosses. Here's Martin, ball through to Ergamal. Ergamal, early opportunity here for the Mariners. Cuts inside from the byline towards the back post. And somehow, Kaya Simon has missed the frame of goal. That is the best opportunity of the game so far for either side. She was unmarked, Kaya Simon. Ergamal did so well after being slipped in behind by Martin. And Simon misses the target. Well, of all the players you want at the back post, Kaya Simon is the one with the most big game experience in this Mariners side. It's her 118th A-League women's appearance, of course, 111 Matildas appearances. But she couldn't challenge Courtney Newborn on that occasion. That could be a huge moment, depending on the rest of this second half. They'll keep knocking on the door, though, the Mariners, Ergamal. Finds Galich, Bianca Galich, trying to deliver. Morrison, though, is in the way. She always seems to be Kayla Morrison. Paige Hayward coming away with it. May Bryson. Out wide, an opportunity for a cross. Cleared away by the first player. And this time, hoofed as far as possible from the victory defence. Dangerous turnover here in victory's favour. Chidiak forced to play back, perhaps losing some of the momentum that they had. Here goes Rankin. 
Playing it up to Beatty Goad. She's got Privatelli in the middle, as well as Lowe and Chidiak. It's held out there well, though, by the Mariners' defence. The Mariners come away with it up this right-hand side. Banawea looking for that run of Ergamal. She is the furthest forward player at all times, Ergamal. She is the player they're looking to release in those counter-attacking situations. Annabelle Martin, ball in the middle. Kaya Simon can't beat Victory's defence. A little follow-up. The eyes lit up in the second phase of play. Skewed high and wide pretty comprehensively. Well, Simon again finding herself in a good situation. The ball from Martin maybe didn't quite go where she wanted. Simon was faced with two victory defenders and wasn't able to find her feet and a way around them. Rachel Lowe standing in an offside position as she waited for that ball. Well, she's kicked the ball away there, Lowe, but Ferry will take no action, despite a few hopeful glances by Mariners players. See there, the total shots Mariners have had almost double victories. Not necessarily that the Mariners have so much had the better of the game, but they've probably had the better of the opportunities. And that one from Simon a few minutes ago, the best of the game so far. Waterloo's ball for Simon. She loses out on the first touch. Murphy has the ball stolen away, but a slip at a critical moment from Banawea means the Mariners can't take advantage. They do win the ball back this time, though. Banawea running onto the ball, goes for the cross, deflection, and Agamal hits it over. Agamal with another fantastic opportunity to put the Mariners in the lead, and she skied it. It was fantastic work from Roller Badawea. Courtney Newborn palmed it straight at the Chinese international. And Ergamal just leaned back, couldn't get over it, and hit it into the sky. Well, that is two opportunities now for the Mariners in the first five minutes of this second half. Could they rue not putting those away? Both times, both players managed to sky the ball above the frame of goal, not challenging Newbon. And if victory find a way to go up the other side of the pitch and weather this storm, that will be a five minutes of great regret for the Mariners. Well, Nash gave herself up there for that handball before it had been called. Just misjudged the flight, bounced up and hit her arm awkwardly. Woodlow. Nice touch by Martin. Ergamal looking to play in about a way up. Maybe could have gone herself there, Ergamal. Morrison being pressed in here. Victory. We have to do well to get it out, and they've done so. Just Nash driving in field. Not a great ball to Morrison. Newborn, though, manages to get there. Victory feeling the pressure at the minute, but this could be the release they need. Chidiak. Driving into space, options in the middle. Alex Shidiak with the cross, Dumont is out. Well, 
and punches away. She's collected Rachel Lowe in the process, though, and she's stayed down here, though. Dumont's just gone for the ball. But an on-rushing Rachel Lowe has been cleaned up as she's done so. Chidiak's ball was a good one. Dumont's keeping was good. You see the cap fly off. And she's punched it away. And Lowe, just a victim of an unintentional collision. She's okay to continue. And I'll need her today. Melbourne victory, 12 goals this season. She's more than doubled her goal tally this season that she's scored in her entire career. Her 97th A-League women's game today, the 23-year-old formerly of Western Sydney Wanderers and Sydney FC for three seasons each. And this is where Melbourne Victory are really missing the presence of Emily Gionic. She was in such explosive form, earned herself a Matilda's call up. Unfortunately, while she was at the Matildas camp, picked up a calf injury that has ruled her out of this game. Oh, the shot from Simon from distance, just ricocheting off Hanson. Hanson and Nogamal had both gone to ground. and take two of that throw in from an almost identical position. Well, the stakes will get higher and higher as this game goes on and teams tense up. Chidiak has been taken out. And finally, a yellow card is produced. Well, Alex Chidiak in a world of bother here, as is the player that committed the challenge. Paige Hayward, by the looks of it. That was a heavy, heavy collision between the two of them. Again, the intent was to win the ball by Hayward, but was late. We'll take another look at this. Chidiak with a nice chip and then Hayward. Well, she's stuck an arm up to protect herself, arguably. We'll have to see another replay. It may have been a little bit dangerous and that's why Chidiak has gone to ground, but we'll, we'll check that again. It's Chidiak following through Hayward. It's a tough, tough collision. And the arms just hit Chidiak right in the chest. Probably right in the diaphragm as well. You can see her doing some breathing exercises now. And it is a yellow card to Hayward as a result of that challenge. Hayward will argue she was just protecting herself as Chidiak went through. But she did stop the midfielder in her tracks. Paige Hayward, formerly of Adelaide United, between 2021 and 2023. So 48th A League women's appearance today. And Chidiak is up and about and okay to continue. The physio is on the pitch for her, but as a result of a yellow card challenge, she's able to stay on. Hayward has to wait as the player who committed the challenge. Isabel Gomez on the ball for the Mariners. Looking to advance up the pitch. Side flag is up though on that far side.
high press causing some issues on Victory's defence, but they're very calmly playing it around. Not too much trouble. They would have practised that throughout the week. Switch of play now for the Mariners, Wardlow. Ball up the line, Martin couldn't get it into Simon. Although that pass going completely astray, leading to a Mariners throw in in an advantageous position. The impact of that setting sun having some effect on the players. Hayward. Chidiak won the ball and Hayward. Well, that's another heavy challenge on Alex Chidiak. And she will be very, very lucky to escape this without a second yellow card here, Paige Hayward. That is a late, heavy kick on Chidiak. You can perhaps hear the crowd very unhappy with that challenge. And Paige Hayward looking nervous, no card produced yet. She may well get away with this. That is a heavy challenge on the ankle. Again, challenging for the ball, but she's gotten that so, so wrong, Hayward. Referee still checking on Chidiak. Well, hopefully she's okay to continue because she's such a dynamic player. She's in a fair bit of pain. Now let's look at this decision. This is a big one for Rebecca Durkow. She's giving Hayward a talking to. And no second yellow is produced. So Hayward gets away with that one. She remains on the park and it remains 11 v 11 for the moment. Although Chidiak will be off for some treatment. So temporarily 11 v 10 in the Mariners favor. It's victory with the free kick. Morrison launching it long. Hayward, the ball getting away from her. Martin, play it back. The fans applauding the return of Alex Chidiak to the pitch. She'll be okay to continue. Martin, heavy touch. Well, every challenge that Paige Hayward makes now will be scrutinised very, very heavily after that. It might have the impact as well of just making her a bit more timid in the challenge as well. And that could be to victory's advantage as well. Because when you're not willing to make those challenges, when you're a little bit on edge, when you're a little bit nervous, it can certainly help in what has been a ferocious midfield battle. Now she'll play it all the way back to Hanson. And his press maybe getting a little bit muddled here. Ty Simon in front of the pack. Ergamal looking over her shoulder, trying to position correctly. And Chidiak back up and running around. That's a nice ball out wide for victory. Goad is driving forward. It's cut out well. Privatelli was lurking. Kill on Knight to Goad. Beatty, Goad, fancy footwork. But it's cleared away by the Mariners' defence. Well, we're seeing our first substitution of the game now, and it's Peter Trimmers who will come on for Paige Hayward, who 
He's lucky not to be removed by the referee moments earlier. Peter Trimmis, the young Matilda. She scored three goals at the Under-20 Asia Cup. She scored three so far in the A-League women's season, her 19th appearance. She'll be full of confidence and her introduction into the game might be that attacking impetus that the Mariners need. It might just add that extra little bit of spark. She's quick, she's direct. Very, very good young player, the 17-year-old. That's lovely work on that far side by Victory. Rankin and Goad getting involved. little one-two and a ball delivered on the left Wardlow though able to hack it away to battle we up that possession stat has gone down it was much more in favor of victory at halftime Mariners have had a little bit more of a grip on the game in the second half but still this victory who still do have the advantage in that stat Passing accuracy now dipping below 80% for victory. And what you'll find as this game goes on, as it remains scoreless, it will tense up both teams, nervous to make that mistake, anxious to be the one that puts the foot wrong, that gives the advantage to the opposite side. This is an elimination final. There are no second chances. And players on both sides will get nervous. This is probably where it's going to impact the Mariners a little bit more than victory. Just that inexperience in these situations compared to a victory side who have been there, done that. That's a beautiful ball over the top to Leah Privatelli, who's got an opportunity but can't get there in time. Now Chidiak with a strike! Just wide from Alex Chidiak. In the second phase of play, Chidiak was there and almost made herself a hero for victory. Oh, she's been in the wars, she's been involved in everything. It looked for a moment as if Dumont was beaten. But it flashed past the outside of the post. Here's another opportunity for victory. Rankin, cut out by Irwin. She's got low behind her though, she's got to be careful here, Ash Irwin. Deals with it well. Drama does the last 25 minutes of regulation time have in store. Will we see the 14th game of A-League women's football go into extra time or can someone find a winner? Coaches as well will be just a little bit more reluctant to go to their bench knowing that extra time is in the offing. What players are capable of playing 120 minutes if it comes to that? What players will need a rest? Take a look at this opportunity again. Privatelli, it was really good work from Martin to get there, but then Chidiak just flashed wide. Those fans behind the goal thought it was flying in. Badawia slips over. It's found its way to Mariner's feet. Galich, Ergamal can't turn it into the path of Trimus. Bianca Galich, maybe not quite as involved in this half as she was in the first one. Kayla Morrison ensuring that Mariner's looks on goal don't turn into anything more than looks Wardlow will opt to play it back and keep possession all delivered in calmly headed away although Trimis has found Ergamal Ergamal looking to turn Trimis on the edge of the area, and finally, victory scramble it away. Just didn't quite find 
the feet of a Mariners player, Batawea trying to get past Murphy. Murphy doing really well, the youngster. And that's fantastic work from the 18-year-old. Great use of the body to shield the ball away. Alex Chidiak on the charge. Alex Chidiak brought down. And now this is another big decision. It's a yellow card. There were players in the box and Chidiak perhaps not going directly on goal. But Irwin brought down Chidiak very dangerously just outside the penalty area. Well, if you can lip read, you can get a sense of what Chidiak feels about being fouled yet another time. But she was through here. Irwin had to go in for the slight challenge. And mistimed it. So victory will have an opportunity from a set piece. One again by Chidiak. She was one or two steps away from the penalty area. That is almost as close as you can be to a penalty right on the edge. The 18-year-old Murphy will be the one on free kick duties. Will she go herself or will she deliver it to a teammate? Alana Murphy for Melbourne Victory goes low. A slip from Bryson and on the follow through, Rankin has collected Dumont. She's clutching at her head. It was all accidental from Rankin. And hopefully, Dumont is okay. She has a history of concussion. Bryson just slipped there and Rankin's gone in for the ball. And on the follow through, perhaps her knee has collected Dumont. She was just going for the ball. There was nothing untoward about it, nothing illegal about it, but it's an occupational hazard of being a goalkeeper. Of course, on the bench for the Mariners, Sarah Langman, 10 appearances this season. Actually, if she makes it onto the pitch, Langman, she will no longer be the A-League women's player with the most amount of appearances who has not appeared in a final. She's made 80. A-League women's appearances and yet has not taken the pitch in a final. If Casey Dumont is not okay to continue, that may well change. And we'll look at this again on the follow through. Rankin, she did try to pull out of it in fairness to her. She did her best to get her feet away from Dumont. But it looks like maybe just a knee has clipped her as she slid through. They will take every precaution here, the Mariners. They know they've got a quality goalkeeper on the bench in Langman. And Dumont will be desperate to see this game out against her former side. She will be desperate to make her mark. And she is back up on her feet. Physio looking concerned. They will have done the assessments that they need to do. Well, she looks like she's in pain. She is up on her feet. The physio and the doctor are leaving the field of play, so that seems to indicate she will be okay to continue. Although she's really struggling here, Dumont. She's back on her haunches. It's quite a hefty challenge. But now she's back into game mode. Annoyed at her teammates, annoyed at the referee, and we get back underway. Fingers crossed that doesn't impact her too much in this game. She might be tested straight away here. Here's Goad looking to find Chidiak, who goes to ground in the box. Penalty not given. Opportunity still on from Privatelli, who couldn't control it. Well, the home fans here not happy. Well... You be the judge of that one. That that looks like Chidiak was fouled by Wardlow in the penalty area. 
Well, after all of that, we'll see a substitution. Paige Zoyce will come on in place of Elise Kellen Knight. Kellen Knight has had her injury troubles of late, so perhaps not quite able to get through a full 90 minutes. Paige Zoyce, the Victorian, enters the field of play. Very popular player amongst fans of victory. Her 33rd A-League women's appearance, only 20 years of age. She'll be hoping to make her impact in place of the veteran. Yeah, swing from Murphy. Doesn't matter though, still has the ball and Zoyce with her first involvement. Into her side of throw. We see a second substitution now for the Mariners. It's Tess Quilligan who's coming onto the field of play. She's replacing, interestingly, all about a way up. This is her 10th appearance in the competition, Quilligan. She's made seven starts. She played for Emma Husband's Sydney University side between 2021 and 23. Come on, Melbourne! Which is why Husband knew of her and was the connection with the signing. It's been pretty good, the 19 year old. Come on here to help affect some change in the momentum of this game, the momentum of which victory seemed to have the upper hand of. That's a nice ball over the top from low to find Chidiak. Alex Chidiak, dangerous, has been so dangerous all afternoon. She'll be forced to play it back this time, although her pass goes astray. And now for a throw. She'll have a good collection of bruises, Chidiak, after this game. She's done everything she can to try and fashion something for her side. 15 minutes of regulation time to go, plus stoppages and plus if we need it, extra time and penalties. Still plenty on the clock. Here's the Mariners looking to affect a chance of their own. Peter Trimmis on the ball, edge of the area, cuts inside. Peter Trimmis shoots! And Newborn forced to save. Never really enough power on that from Trimmis. What a storyline it would be if the 17 year old can find the back of the net today. Last 10 minutes or so after starting the half, it was all Mariners. They had two golden opportunities, Kaya Simon first and then Ergamal, both missing the frame of goal from close range. Victory will be feeling hard done by. They haven't had a penalty and it's still 11 v 11. Here's Trimmis. To Martin, Annabelle Martin, up against Jess Nash. Jess Nash playing it into the middle. Quilligan, first involvement, and her pass was slightly astray. Wardlow saving the blushes of her teammate. Nice turn on that side from Bryson. Plenty of space in front of her. Pico doesn't give up the chase though. He's gone to ground, no foul given either way. He's cleared well into the Mariners' half. Sherwin is there to pick up the scraps and he'll start again from the back through Dumont. Annabelle Martin. Receiving the ball out wide. To play it back inside to Quilligan. Who this time hits her pass well to Wardlow. Searching for a way through here. The Mariners, here's Gomez. Out wide, onside, says the assistant. Morrison there to clear away the cross at the first time. Bit of 
a hush now around the crowd. It's getting more and more tense as this game goes on. And as the players know, the fans know that one goal could be the decider. Gomez back. Wardlow. Martin. Through midfield. Galich to Bryson. Bryson's touch. Getting away from her and Murphy is there to play it to the dangerous goad. Chidiak. Rankin. Nice touch by Goad and a one-two with Chidiak. They have such connection. Alex Chidiak and Beatty Goad. You can see that in their play. Dumont still struggling a little bit after that injury. She picked up the trailing leg of Jamila Rankin. Here is Rankin trying to play in Goad. Galich is the one who's tracked her run. She'll try and let it go all the way out for a goal kick and eventually succeeds, although not incredibly convincingly. with the goal kick. We'll go long now, the Mariners. It's instinctive at this stage of the game. You want to go long, you want to get the ball away from your defensive third as much as possible. Bryson just sneaking a few too many metres with the throw. Jules won stat 31 to the Mariners, 23 to victory. Mariners at the moment winning that physical battle. But Chidiak in particular certainly drawing a lot of fouls. Very close to winning them. A couple of penalties as well. And tackles one stat showing the work that the Mariners are doing in the middle of the pitch. Lovely ball from Go to release Rankin. She's got Low and Privatelli ahead of her. Ball. Not good enough for Privatelli to run onto. Now Dumont, she's probably the best shot stopper that this competition has, possibly that this competition has ever seen, but maybe other areas of distribution is lacking. Maybe that'll come into play in the last 10 minutes or so. Kai Simon. Nice one-two with Trimmers. Kaya Simon still going. A touch evades her. And we saw that stat pop up before. The Mariners have had only double the shots of victory. They weren't able to add another to their repertoire there. Here you come, victory. Match up the line to no one. We're seeing shadows. With that pass, Simon there. Well, it was good work from Hansen to shepherd her away. But at the same time, it was an errant first touch as well. Look at the other players on the bench for the Mariners. They could bring on Annalise Rasmussen. You imagine that husband will be quite conservative given the possibility of extra time. But Rasmussen, 18 years of age, she scored three goals this season she's a gosford girl she's from the mariners academy she'll be desperate to get on the pitch at some stage the attacker but again with extra time looming coaches do tend to be very conservative with their substitutions it's a great tackle on gomez
Locatelli has taken down Martin and eventually the referees called a foul. It was a very, very late call. Victory fans not happy about it. Well, they're arguing that Martin is the one who's put her leg up and got herself in that situation. Fripatelli was certainly strong in the challenge. <laughs> had a lot of big decisions to make today, Rebecca Durkow. There was just another one that the home fans aren't too pleased about. She's dropping a little bit deeper than maybe you would expect in this formation. We actually saw that at the Under-20 Asia Cup. Coach Leah Blaney employed her as a midfielder in the third place playoff towards the end of the second half, and it worked well. She wasn't able to get too much service as a striker, dropped into midfield, got a lot more touches on the ball, and then, of course, the young Matildas went on to win that game 1-0. So maybe used in a similar fashion by Emily Husband here. Here's Chidiak space brought to ground although this time it was a clean challenge from Gomez she's still on the ball Chidiak she doesn't go away and this time both teams arguing to get the ball Chidiak loses the argument and of course Chidiak 33 appearances for the Matildas two goals doesn't need a squad though since the Canada series when she was called in as an injury replacement. She continues performing like she does. A-League women's fans know how good she is. Last season's Julie Dolan medalist. Only played 13 games last season as well to win that accolade. Here's Privatelli getting past Martin. And Privatelli's cross cut out by Wardlow and out for a corner. We're really getting to the stage now where any goal you would imagine would be the winner. There will be some amount of stoppage time given Dumont's injury. There was quite a lengthy delay there. There's been a few niggly moments. But as we enter the last five minutes of regulation time, we get the sense victory will want to make this count. Here's Chidiak. Taking the corner, headed away by Wardlow. And Gomez is there to clear it out of the penalty area. Beatty Goad is on it. Comes away to Rankin, and Victory will recycle possession. It's a nice turn from the substitute, Quilligan. Can't quite get away from Goad, though. And Victory again. The team in possession, switch of play to Chidiak. Well cut out by Martin though, that was very well read. And Ergamal will get there ahead of Zoys. Ergamal, Zoys did just enough to put off the ball. Privatelli trying to spin. Kalic was there. It's victory who come away with it. Nice switch of play by Zoys. Only two shots on target to one. It's been a game bereft of shooting quality in the final third, and that's why we find ourselves at nil all. It's getting scrappier and scrappier in midfield as the game goes on. That's a nice ball looking for Rachel Lowe. Dumont's come out. Well, it was offside in any case, but she took a risk coming out there, Dumont. Lowe pulled out of it knowing she was offside, perhaps. discussions happening on the sideline for the coaches as well. Jeff Hopkins has been here 17 times before. 
12 wins in his coaching career in finals games. Emily Husband, this is her first season in the competition and her first finals game. So a big difference in experience on the pitch in terms of finals, but also in the dugout as well. How do you react as a coach in this situation? She's won championships at MPL level. But this is a whole different ball game. Well, a slip again from Hanson and Ergamal comes away with it. Here goes Galich in space. Plenty of victory defenders back. Kaya Simon with her first look at the ball in a while. She'll play it back to Isabel Gomez. Still going Gomez, blocked by Murphy. Simon, though, still unmarked in acres of space. She'll deliver in a ball towards the back post. Trimis! Peter Trimis misses the frame of goal with her header. It was a great ball from Simon. We'll take a look at this again at the back post. Did really well to win it. Ended up wide. She's had an impact coming off the pitch so far, Peter Trimis. Couldn't hit the target there, so still only three shots on target for this entire game so far. And you figure if either side had really challenged the goalkeepers more, in for a different game altogether. Here's Martin. Annabelle Martin delivering the ball to the back post, just headed out of the path of Bergamal. Trimis, though, is there to gather. Bryson, Faye Bryson, cut out well by Rankin. Ball delivered back in all the way across to Kai Simon. And it's deflected away. She couldn't get the contact that she wanted. The 32-year-old again found herself in space in the penalty area and again could not get the shot away on target. Well, here it's beaten Nash and it was fantastic work in truth by Hansen to get across and block the shot, but Simon would have hoped for much greater contact than that. There will be seven minutes of added time in this second half. Can either side find a winner before we are destined to extra time? Goad can't get past Bryson. The heart rates are rising. The blood pressure getting higher and higher at the home of the Matildas. The stakes are so, so high. Melbourne victory, a team that only just scraped into the finals would have had much higher expectations for their season. And the Mariners, it's already been a fairy tale story in many ways. Not many expected them to make finals, to be anywhere near the top of the table. Many predicted them, in fact, to sit right at the foot of the table at the beginning of the season. But this team, M Husband, they've surprised everyone. They want this to continue. <laughs> They'll be doing everything in their power to do so. They have six minutes of stoppage time to go before extra time. Martin, her cross cut out by Murphy. And Peter Trimis wins the ball off her young Matilda's teammate, Trimis, up against Zoyce. Peter Trimis can't hit a target. So it's Victory who come away with it again. Nash Quilligan got a foot in. But Privatelli, the counter-attack is on for victory. But it's fantastic work from Isabel Gomez to track Privatelli's run. I'm sure that the transition could go no further. Well, that's the pace of the youngster, able to come back and cover the determination as well. Victory searching for an opening. This disciplined Mariners defence, the second best defence in the competition. Rankin finds Goad, 
who delivers in a ball to Mont. Dangerous, claimed it well. Makes sure of it. She'll take her time with this kick as well. As long as she possibly can. Look at those final third entries. 51 for victory, 47 for the Mariners and still no goal. Gomez rides the challenge of Murphy, tries to hit it over the top to Ergamal, but Newborn is able to see it out for a goal kick. Ball over the top low has already resigned to being offside. So gave up the goose. Just ticked over halfway into stoppage time. Still three and a half minutes for either side to get a dramatic winner. Chidiak, ball over the top, looking for low. Dumont forced to head it away. Chidiak, though, will remain on the ball. Murphy, Goad. Beatty Goad delivers, looking for Chidiak, who can't beat Wardlow. Wardlow just stood her ground, stood strong. And this from Dumont, well, she had to be inventive because Lowe was right there. She's just booting it as far as she possibly can in stoppage time. Get it away from the Mariners half. If they keep giving the ball away, victory will capitalize. Privatelli, the victory legend, Leah Privatelli enters the penalty area and is tackled by Martin. A goal kick, says referee Rebecca Durkow. Privatelli, it was a good touch. She did well to enter the penalty area to challenge Martin. And I have to say, I'm not sure how that was called a goal kick. Jeff Hopkins isn't too happy about it either. Come on, Melbourne. Come on, Melbourne. Come on, of course, Melbourne. just a reminder, there's no VAR in the A-League women's. We have the advantage of replays from our vantage point. Referees out on the pitch do not. It's very important to remember. The Mariners with the ball to create perhaps what will be the last chance of the half. Ergamal getting involved, can't get past victory. Heavy touch from Chidiak, she does well to recover. And then the ball past Quilligan. Bryson, Quilligan, back to Bryson, the ball's gone underneath her foot, Chidiak is challenging, Goad comes in and wins it, Beatty Goad, Zois, Alex Chidiak, great touch, she'll spin and play it into Goad, Goad with the first time ball, headed away from Privatelli, Paige Zois, trying to prevent Galich from advancing the ball forward. The ball's come off the back of Gomez. Murphy couldn't find low. Wardlow calm, cool, collected. Paige Zoyce again. Oh, I'm not sure who that was to, perhaps anticipating a run from Pipitelli that never came. Now Martin has gone to ground and a foul awarded in the Mariners' favour. And a yellow card produced as well for Leah Privatelli. Well, she's not happy about it. Privatelli and Martin just having some words. Maybe asking each other what they're planning to have for dinner tonight, something of that nature. Oh, 
are at the referee's discretion now. We have passed over seven minutes of stoppages. And this game looks as if it is destined for an extra 30 minutes. Wardlow, ball up the line. Victory collects. Murphy, will there be one last chance? Kai Simon, Kai Simon to win it for the Mariners, drags it well wide. Another shot off target for the Mariners as we tick over eight minutes of stoppage time. And referee Rebecca Durkow says that is enough. So, full time of regulation time. These scores are not able to be separated. Nil all at the end of 90 minutes. We will be going to extra time, an additional 30 minutes of play. The 14th A-League women's game that has gone into extra time. And of course, if these teams cannot be separated after those 30 minutes, we will be headed to penalties. Full time of regular time. It's Melbourne victory nil, Central Coast Mariners nil. Well, this is now where conditioning, where fitness comes into it, experience as well. Take a look at the highlights from the first 90 minutes of action. Annabelle Martin, ball in to Ergamal, who did really well to get in, and then this from Kaya Simon. She really should have hit the target. It was fantastic work on that flank. She knows it as well. That was only 45 seconds into the second half, and then this from Ergamal. She really should have hit the target there as well, only a few minutes later. It came out to her in an advantageous position. She wasn't able to get her body over the ball. That's the first thing in the coaching shooting manual. Leah Privatelli couldn't get it past Martin. Alex Chidiak taking the strike from just outside the area. He wasn't Alex Chidiak busy in this game. Almost had a moment that would have been front and centre of the highlight reel, couldn't hit the target in there. Peter Trimmers as well, the substitute, the 17-year-old at the back post. Her header flying over the crossbar. So the full-time stats, the Mariners, look at that, 15 shots and only two on target. That is the telling stat of this game. The Mariners have had the better of the opportunities. They've not been able to put them away despite victory's possession. And as a result, we are headed to extra time. Well, these huddles are so important. Jeff Hopkins, he's been here 17 times before. He knows how to win a finals game. 12 of those 17 were wins. He's been here with Melbourne Victory nine times. Six of those were wins. Melbourne Victory know how to get the job done in extra time. This team did so an elimination final last season after penalties. Meanwhile, for the Mariners, that is a team, a lot of new players to the league, a lot of inexperience. Emily Husband laying down the law. Her first ever finals game as an A-League women's head coach is headed to extra time. Victory looking entranced by Hopkins' message. The home crowd will be behind them. Substitutes there, Emma Checker. All of her experience, if she comes on the pitch, that'll be her 150th appearance in the A-League Women's. She's retiring at the end of this season. She'll be hoping it's not her last. Correa Rukino as well. She scored 31 goals in the Victorian MPL last season. Maybe hasn't quite delivered on her promise for Melbourne victory. She's only scored three and 16 appearances, but is back in the side in the absence of Gilnick. Will we see Aquino? Could she be the one to make the difference? in the second half. Casey Dumont, well, as a keeper, your thoughts naturally go to what could be awaiting at the end. There is no better keeper in this league at penalties than Casey Dumont. If it is required, she will be ready. And their side will be hoping that they can get the job done without needing to go to penalties. All hands on deck, physios, staff members, all in for the Mariners. And now the players 
having a chat for victory. BD Goat, Alex Chidiak. They'll be saying, keep on going, keep on going. You wonder how Chidiak's feeling. You wonder how many bruises she'll have at the end of this match. She's been fouled. She's been battered. She almost scored. Probably came the closest for victory in that second half. and seems to be indicating she's cold. It does drop dramatically in temperature in Melbourne as the night goes on, certainly compared to the Central Coast. It is a perfect afternoon and evening for football and it's a good temperature to keep on going. Well, Kaya Simon, I wonder how she's going to go getting through 120 minutes. Ergamal, she's been lively. Imagine she won't have too many issues getting through the time. So it'll be Melbourne Victory who will kick off this first passage of extra time. Alex Chidiak is on the ball and she gets us back underway. Scoreless after 90 minutes, 30 minutes more to play. So there'll be two passages of 15 minutes, two little mini periods of play. someone step up and be the hero and will we go all the way to penalties Nash back to Hanson you wonder whether the teams will be able to keep up the press as well the Mariners have been pressing with Ergamal at the tip of the spear will that continue will they drop off a little bit Hooligan almost winning the ball back Simon chasing Hanson up and that ball Goes straight to Trimmers. Trimmers finds Ergamal. Ergamal cuts inside. Cross at the back post and a swing and a miss from Bianca Galich arriving at the edge of the area. Ergamal again showing what she can do, her fancy footwork. Now it's victory. On the counter, Chidiak, she's got low on her inside. She's got Pripatelli as well. She'll play it to Goad. It's such a great combination, Goad and Chidiak. Goad looking to square it, can't get past Wardlow. And Gomez is there to win the ball for the Mariners. Quilligan was fouled. And she looked to advance the ball up the pitch. So it'll be a Mariners free kick. hit down the line looking for Simon. Morrison does really well. Being pressed by Ergamal. There'll be that little bound of energy from the lollies and the energy boost they got during the break. Probably more sophisticated than lollies these days. The hydrolyte. The inspiration from the coaches team talk. We will see fatigue start to play a part as the game continues. We certainly saw that last night as well. Lovely turn from Beatty Goad. Goad looking to deliver. Dumont is there. Cuts it out before Pivotelli can get on the end of it. They played six seasons of football together, Dumont and Pivotelli. You wonder if they're just having a little bit of a word to each other, a little sledge. Wardlow gets in the way of Lowe. Peter Trimmers looking to get there ahead of Hanson, can't do so. Lovely ball over the top, looking for Privatelli. Martin will try and cut it out, it's deflected and a header goes wide. Rachel Lowe was arriving and she could not direct her header on target. This is fantastic work from Privatelli. It was deflected off Martin. And Lowe couldn't get her body in the right position to tuck it away. She 
couldn't get there for her 13th goal of the season. That is another huge moment. We are still at only three shots on target for the game. Another missed opportunity to have one there. Murphy looking to play it through, but it's cut out well by Irwin. Galich. Chidiak gets there. The Mariners more than double the shots of victory, but only two on target. They have not been challenging Courtney Newbin enough. The victory themselves have not been challenging Dumont enough. Hansen. All danger signs from Newbon. The last thing you want in extra time in an elimination final is to do something that gets you on the Twitter account of when playing out from the back goes wrong. That is the thing that is going through the players' heads right now. They will be so anxious to not make a mistake. They will be so anxious to keep the ball, to ensure that they can create. Things will be very, very tense out there. And there'll be plenty of tired legs. Trimmers, nice turn. Wardlow. Ergamal strikes it. Goes wide again. Her appeals for handball as she controlled it. But it was academic in the end because her shot was never threatening Newborn's goal. Harrison, Hansen, Zoys. Cuts inside well and creates an opening for victory. Switch of play, finding Beatty Goad. Beatty Goad into the penalty area. She'll shoot Goad. Shot blocked. Although it's come out for Privatelli, who can't get the connection required. Zoys can't get past Gomez. Every attacking incursion at the moment could be the one. Another ball in, delivered and blocked away for a corner. Well, both teams throwing everything at it. Faye Bryson in the wars. Remember very, very early on in the first couple of minutes, she coughs one to the face after defending a corner at the front post. And that one again, just a falcon. Okay, though. Come on, Melbourne. One of those Come that on, never Melbourne. ever feels nice. On, Curl up, delivered in, headed away by Martin. Zoys will come away with it. She loves a long shot, Zoys, but she couldn't get her feet under the ball on that occasion. Rankin into the box. Jamila Rankin deflection and kicked away. Eventually, Zoys intercepts the transition. Murphy. Alana Murphy to Alex Chidiak into the penalty area. Alex Chidiak shoots. Dumont forced into the save. Low and to her right. Alex Chidiak in that much space will be giving the Mariners nightmares. But it was a combination in the end of Gomez and also Dumont's save that has kept the scores level. Victory fans very familiar with corners in extra time of finals. This time it's Alana Murphy taking it from that side. Dumont punches away. And two Mariners players, Quilligan and Ogamal, making sure that it gets out of the penalty area, although Zoys has done really well to put it back in play. Privatelli, it'll loop very, very nicely into the arms of Dumont. Well, both coaches still with substitutions up their sleeve. 
Kev Hopkins has only made one. The striker, Correa Aquino, is there waiting. They would like to make that change. But now here's the Mariners on the attack. Peter Trinis into the penalty area. Errant touch and experience defending from Hansen. Martin, Quilligan, Ash Irwin, Faye Bryson. Kalic loses out. Not able to suck it back around the corner for her fullback. So we're going to see a third substitution for the Mariners. And interestingly, it's Ash Irwin who will come off. Tiana Karabasis will replace her. Maybe a slight injury concern for Irwin. Maybe a concern that she can't get through the 120 minutes. She didn't start the Mariners' previous game, so it's a defender swap. Karen Bassis has scored a goal this season, also gotten an assist. The girl from Townsville, her junior club, the Northern Fury up there in North Queensland. I was saying before some of the Mariners players are feeling the cold of Melbourne. Well, you certainly would be if you're from Townsville. Fairly gets under 25 up there. Nash cut out by Martin. Victory will have another throw a little bit further up the pitch. Mariners coming away with it once more. Ergamal can't keep it in. And it's a judge to be a Mariners throw. Four minutes of this first period of extra time to go. Still need the team able to break for deadlock. Martin up the line. No, Gamal not able to beat Nash, who keeps going here, Jess Nash. Hits it up to Lowe. Rachel Lowe, fancy footwork. Gets the substitute. Karen Bassis, who's come on cold, but she's done well to poke the ball out of play there. The other factor to consider for these coaches as well is the possibility of penalties looms. Might be who is best placed to take a penalty and to make substitutes accordingly. And still 20 minutes or so away from that possibility though. That's good footwork from Gomez to win the throw for the Mariners. Martin gives Lowe a chance to run into some space. Rachel Lowe with the ball looking for Beattie Goad. Too much on it. And Dumont is there. She's happy to make her former victory teammates come to her. And you'd imagine this is going to be another one launched as far as she possibly can. The battle of field position at this point. There she goes, Dumont, high into the sky. And it's intercepted by Murphy, although she's not able to keep it in, the youngster. She's been good today, the 18-year-old. Victory Academy graduate. And young Matilda. Gamal. Martin. Wardlow. Martin. Annabelle Martin trying to get away from Privatelli. Privatelli can kick it out for a Mariners throw. There might be one 
chance left in this first period of extra time. Shidiak picks up the ball. She'll play it out to Rankin, who's been so good today as well. Rankin, first time ball, it was looking for low. Rachel O gave up the attempt to win the ball. Wardlow, it's been rock solid in the 104 minutes so far. Peter Trimis gets away from Goad, plays it out to Bryson. Faye Bryson looking to cut inside, can't squeeze it towards the back post where Kaya Simon is lurking. Ball delivered this time, header! And just wide, Simon was there as well. Isabel Gomez with the header, and now a real problem in back play. Jamila Rankin is down hurt. She's clutching at a calf. After 105 minutes of football, let's hope it's nothing more than cramp. It was Ergamal, in fact, with the header. As the fourth official indicates, one minute of stoppage time. Rankin does not look too happy. She's clutching at the calf. She's getting some physio attention now. Just before the first break of extra time. She's down, but she's back up on her feet. Her victory have not had any luck with carbs as of recent. Well, she's drinking that pickle juice. That cannot taste nice. But she's doing it anyway. It's for the greater good. So possibly just a calf. She might spend the remainder of this period of play just stretching out and making sure she's okay. I'm sure that's not the last of the pickle juice that we'll see in this extra time. 120 minutes of football is not nice on anybody. Chidiak. Ball over the top was looking for low. Of course, we've ticked over the one minute of stoppage time. We've probably got about one more minute to go thanks to that Rankin injury. So the Mariners maybe with a chance before the break. Pressure on Newborn. The crowd held their breath for a moment. It all turned out okay in the end for the home side. And still scoreless. Half time of extra time. This deadlock is yet to be broken. Players on both sides now, their thoughts turning to what could be. It is getting more and more tense. Kaya Simon, the veteran, has had plenty of opportunities. Alex Chidiak as well has been so busy. But still, neither side able to find the back of the net. Half time of extra time. It's Melbourne victory nil. Central Coast Mariners nil. And still, this goes on. Both sides having plenty of opportunities. Both sides unable to convert. They've looked dangerous in periods, dangerous with the ball, dangerous in transition. What more can these coaches say? What more can Emma Husband tell her inexperienced side? Would Chidiak be the one who makes the difference? Will it be someone else? Will it be a substitute? Will we see Jeff Hopkins turn to his bench a second time in this game? Or will it be the Mariners who find a way? 
Jeff Hopkins in deep conversation. His staff, Melissa Maisel's Melbourne Victory goalkeeping coach this season, former Victory player as well. No doubt talking about penalties they would have rehearsed. But here come the Mariners straight away looking for the long shot is Ergamal. The shot's blocked. 15 more minutes to decide which side will continue their season. And Bryson is down in back play for the Mariners. Play will continue, however. Wardlow picks up the ball and now play will stop. Because Bryson is down injured. She hasn't really moved. She's in quite a bit of pain, the English woman. This is not a good sign for the Mariners. We'll take a look at how this occurred. Bryce, I'm just getting tangled with Chidiak. It's unclear exactly what part is hurt. Maybe an ankle. Hopefully it's not the knee as she's landed. It seems to be testing out that ankle, so that may be where the issue lies. Very good today. Two assists this season. Bryson. The goal this season as well. Mariners will be very much hoping that she is all right and able to continue. She is being helped to her feet now. Isabel Gomez getting a bit of encouragement from her coach. And this doesn't look good for Bryson. She is limping off, but that doesn't look like the walk of someone that's going to be able to continue. She's such a key player up and down that right flank for the Mariners. The physio has indicated something. Not quite sure what it is. Correa Aquino will enter the field of play for victory. Jeff Hopkins is making his second substitution. She's entering for Leah Pugatelli. What can she produce? The Japanese national she came into the competition with such fanfare as we see Faye Bryson doing some more exercises on the sideline. She'll do everything she can to try and get back on the pitch. Maria Aquino, 24 years of age. She hasn't played in four games. She's gone out of favour since the return of Gilnick to the side. Now here she is straight away on the ball. Correa Aquino battling forward. Rachel Lowe. One, two, Rachel Lowe. It's gone over the top. Can it be cleared? It is by Gomez off the line. And the Mariners somehow escape. Rachel Lowe, a wonderful one-two with Chidiak. Dumont got her gloves to it, and Gomez had to clear it off the line. Correa Aquino with an almost instant impact, the substitute. And now Lowe is down cramping. She's being assisted by Aquino. Well, Dumont, she did well to come out. And there's the pickle juice for Lowe. I said it wouldn't be the first pickle juice when Rankin had some, Lowe's had some. And it was a lot less disgust as well. She's done it like a veteran, Rachel Lowe. Well, that was such a good opportunity for victory. Isabel Gomez, number one in the A-League women's for possession recovered as well. And there's an example of her defensive attributes. Here come victory again. Rankin had the better of extra time so far. Beatty Goad cutting inside. Nice work to play it too low. Against Karen Bassis. The 
and wins a goal kick. That's fantastic work from the substitute defender. into Trimmers. Again, slips again. It's coming more and more into play. As this game goes on, we've seen a number of players lose their footing. Hopefully that doesn't have any significant impact on the outcome. Ten minutes for either side to find a goal to prevent penalties. Aquino can't quite get the right touch. She's pressuring Wardlow. Gomez. And now the Mariners driving forward. Here's Ergamal. Can Ergamal get there? She can. She shoots straight at Newbon, but another opportunity. And Ergamal cannot win it for the Mariners. Does either side want to put the ball in the back of the net? That's good goalkeeping from Newbon. But my goodness, both of these sides are giving up opportunities. Here's another one. For victory, Correa Aquino, the substitute, rounds the keeper. Aquino blocks Jasmine Wardlow. Blocks the shot from Aquino. This is all action now. All of a sudden, this game has opened up. Does either side want to win? And neither side wants to lose. Here come the Mariners again. Wonderful drop at the shoulder from Galich, who shot straight into the gloves of Newborn and we can all take a breath. Here's this first opportunity, Ergamal, her first shot straight at Newborn and her second again. Newborn did well to get up and make the double save, but you have to say Ergamal should have done better with that finish. And then Victory go all the way up the other end, round the keeper and come so close. Now Lowe's coming up with Maradona spins. Here's Aquino, Pereira Aquino. Good defence by the Mariners. Goad. Edie Goad. Goes to ground and a foul is given against Isabel Gomez, who will receive a yellow card as well. Oh, Beady Goad. Doing really well to get around the defenders, just not able get past Gomez who committed the foul in the process. And a final substitution for the Mariners. What a story this would be. Gosford product, Annalise Rasmussen coming onto the pitch. She's replacing Isabel Gomez who just picked up that yellow card. Annalise Rasmussen, the 18 year old, she scored three goals so far in her 19 A-League women's appearances, two starts. She's from the academy. She knows how much this means to the people of the Central Coast. Their men's side has been inspiring a region over the past few seasons. And now their women's side has the opportunity to do so. They have to defend this free kick though. Alana Murphy, the victory youngster, standing over it. Murphy delivers and Dumont punches away only as far as Zoys who played out to Rachel Lowe and her attempt is a wild one on the half volley well the other factor that comes into it Annalise Rasmussen coming on the pitch will she take the penalty the 18 year old there's only six minutes of regulation time to go if we get there if neither side can find a way through Nice touch, Gallage taken out, but legally says the referee. So Rasmussen will take the invitation to keep on going. And now maybe a stoppage for the prone Gallage who did cop some heavy contacts. And Rankin with the challenge. Victory. No, not 
to the referee's liking. And Becca Durkow just telling Victory to take the penalty, take the throw in rather. Goodness, not the penalty, not yet. Take the throw in from the point in which it was given. Rasmussen to touch it around the corner. All over the top. Dumont is there to clear away. Dumont, the greatest ever goalkeeper in A-League women's penalty history. Beanie Goad cuts inside. Alana Murphy lobs a long shot. She'll tink it over the top instead and straight into the gloves of Dumont. And another possibility for Hopkins is, of course, Emma Checker is sitting on the bench in 149 A-League women's appearances. As the Mariners win that foul. She's highly experienced. Would you back her to take a penalty, perhaps? In what could be her last game, she has announced her retirement at the end of the season. That would be an intriguing little subplot if he does turn to the bench. Rasmussen chasing that one down. Whips in a ball. Simon is there, but Morrison is there first. Quilligan. Rasmussen again. Lovely touch from Simon, but offside, says the assistant referee. So it will be a victory free kick. The crowd now will come into it chanting for their team. It's a Melbourne victory home game. The home of the Matildas in the north of Melbourne. These little intangibles in the last few minutes of this game. The keepers are getting nervous. The coaches are getting nervous. Peter Trimmers not able to beat Rankin. Murphy out to Goad. Beaty Goad. Finds Aquino. Correa Aquino. Ball in behind to Lone. Chidiak in the back post. A goal kick is the call. Chidiak cannot believe it. She thought the ball was taken away from her before she could get the shot away. Here's the chance again. Aquino to Lowe. And Trimmers probably was the one who kicked it away. We'll have to see another replay. Chidiak absolutely has a case there, but play goes on. Goad. Beanie Goad trying to win it. Off Karen Bass is the substitute. A bit of shirt pulling both ways. Referee says play on. Zoyce is the one who comes away with it. And Bryson belts it into the grandstand. Hopkins is fuming. But in the meantime, Aquino shoots into the side netting. She's been lively since coming on Korea Aquino and it makes you wonder, Jeff Hopkins has been very reticent to use his bench in this game. Maybe he should have come on a little bit earlier. Victory would have had some more chances, but we play on one minute plus stoppages and then on to penalties. Any goal now you'd think would win it. Bryson finds Galich. Bryson switches play. Peter Trimmes is in acres of space here. Peter Trimmes, Zoys is chasing her down. She'll go out wide. Kaya Simon. What can she produce? Simon, she'll play it back to Martin. Annabelle Martin chops back. Back to Simon. Now the transition chance is over, but they'll have another chance to whip it in. Ergamal! Past everybody! It flashed across the face of goal. This cross from Annabelle Martin. And 
well. You get the sense that if Ergamal had gotten a touch on that, that was heading into the back of the net. How long will this game have to go? Three minutes of stoppage time as victory are in the clear here. Correa Aquino still going. Aquino cuts inside, shoots. Not enough power on the shot. Wardlow did just enough. And Dumont is there to claim. Well, after not playing the last four matches, almost been frozen out of the side, really, since Gilnick kicked into form. That would be some story if Correa Aquino was the one to do it for victory. Here they go again. Aquino chasing this down. Wardlow, though, will get there. Well, this is some contest. Both sides know that whatever they can do in the next two minutes could be decisive. Zoys. Nice touch around the corner from low. The Mariners are the side that come away with it. Trimes taken away by Chidiak. Hasn't she been busy in midfield? Here come victory. Correa Aquino. Again, Aquino out wide. Can't get the ball in. She'll win her side of corner though. And now this is all hands on deck. These long balls now to Aquino are killing the Mariners at the moment. Wardlow though again as she's done all game, all season. She's been rock solid. Keeps Aquino out from having a clear opportunity. Well, not a single fan is lining up for that ice cream van at the moment because they are fixated on what is happening on the pitch. Could this be the moment for Melbourne victory? They know all about scoring from late corners in finals. Who can forget Kyra Cooney Cross only a few seasons ago? Here's Beatty Goat. Can they do the same in an elimination final this time? Beatty Goat, one arm in the air. She delivers, cleared away at the front post. Peter Trimmis now, that was a nice touch, but Chidiak is there to clear. 30 more seconds until this game will go to penalties. Dumont, a little bit sketchy, she gets it away. Mitchell Lowe, all up for Rankin, all eyes on the referee. Murphy. Rasmussen. And that is full time of extra time. We are going to penalties for the eighth time in A-League women's history. Melbourne victory in the Central Coast Mariners unable to be separated. Unable to put the ball in the back of the net. Alana Murphy, she knows all about this. She scored the winning penalty last season when Melbourne Victory defeated Melbourne City on penalties. A full time of extra time. It is Melbourne Victory nil, Central Coast Mariners nil. Well, we'll take a look at the highlights from that period of extra time because there were many. Correa Aquino at instant impact as a substitute. Rachel Lowe to Chidiak to Lowe and here so close to opening the scoring for victory. It was hooked away by Isabel Gomez after Dumont got the first touch. The Mariners, of course, opportunities of their own. Ergamal here really should have put one or two away here, especially that second bite of the cherry. Just hit both straight at Nubon. Nubon made an impressive double save. Well, both sides in the huddle. Casey Dumont, the undefeated champion of A-League women's penalty shootouts. She has been involved in four. She has won all four, including last season for Melbourne victory against Melbourne City. She was in a clip that went viral. She took the first penalty. She saved the next one. Will we see her take a penalty? 
tonight. Well, she's certainly done so in the past. Those victory players, they'll know all about it. They will know each other inside out. Similarly, the Mariners players, they will know all about Courtney Newborn. Newborn played the first four games of the season for the Mariners. They've trained together, they know each other well. And now she's facing up against her former teammates from this season in a penalty shootout. The stakes do not get any higher than this win and they will play Sydney FC in the semi-final lose and their season is over. Melbourne victory, most of these players, they've been here before, they've done it before. Connie Newbin would never have expected that she would be in this situation. Casey Dumont, well, it's Tuesday for Casey Dumont. Will she maintain her unbeaten record? A very important coin toss. Statistically, we know that teams who kick first win the vast majority of shootouts. Looks like Kai Simon may have been the winner on that occasion. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, they're redoing it. Maybe Kayla Morrison. We'll see who's up to take that first penalty. There's a lot more pressure taking the second penalty to stay in the game than there is the first. A reminder about penalty shootouts, it will be a best of five situation. And after that, there's sudden death. No A-League women's penalty shootout has ever gone to sudden death. Could this be the first time? Well, it's good to see smiles in that huddle, in both huddles. It's one of the most nerve-wracking things, taking a penalty in a competitive game. Every player who steps up, it takes so much courage to do so, so much guts, particularly when you put yourself in those first five. You're confident, you know you can do it. But we know that at the end of the day, it will be decided by someone unfortunately not doing it. And that is in the back of the mind of every single one of these players. Casey Dumont. What can she produce in this penalty shootout? Courtney Newborn. I'll shake hands beforehand. Both these keepers know what a pressure situation they're under. Keepers Union stays strong in these situations, but they'll be desperate to make the saves and get the win for their side. So, first up, it is Melbourne Victory who will take the first penalty. It was Victory who won the toss. Casey Dumont in goals. A smile on her face. She knows she's been here before, four times before. She was here last season. Victory penalty taker is Rachel Lowe, their top scorer this season. 12 goals, she takes the penalty and she scores. The perfect start for Victory. The first kick is true. Well, Dumont, she was waiting in goal. She went the right way, but that is fairly unsavable from Lowe. One of the few players who wasn't her teammate and here she is Dumont taking the first penalty we saw it last season for victory can she replicate her effort and score again for the Mariners Casey Dumont steps up and hits it true after one penalty kick each it's one apiece in the elimination final oh she's done it so many times before Dumont it's become quite a trademark you don't often see it from penalty takers. Here's Alex Chidiak for Melbourne Victory, Dumont's former teammate. So busy today. Alex Chidiak. Great penalty from Chidiak. Placed almost perfectly. We've had three good penalties so far. It's Victory with their noses in front. That's superbly hit from Chidiak. Well, Faye Bryson. The English woman now, the first season of A-League Women's, of course, this season has been an important player for the Mariners. To keep things 
is level in the shootout. She does so well hit high into the top of the net. After two kicks apiece, it's two all at the home of the Matildas. Again, a wonderfully hit penalty. Newborn dove the right way, but it just went above her. You see Newborn handing the ball over to Murphy. We saw that same tactic, if you'll recall, famously at the World Cup, Mackenzie Arnold handing the ball over to her Matildas teammates. Newborn taking a leaf out of her book and handing it to Alana Murphy, who scored the winning penalty last season in the elimination final. Can she score again today? Saved by Dumont. The Mariners have the advantage in the penalty shootout. Dumont doing what she does best, saving the penalty. She dove the right way. She was strong in her hands. And the Marin is now with an opportunity to go 3-2 up. A wry smile from Murphy. No one will blame her. It is a fact of life when it comes to these penalty shootouts. Ergamal, she had an opportunity to win it for the Mariners in extra time. Can she strike her penalty true? Ergamal scores. And after three penalties apiece now, it is the Mariners who are leading three shots to two. Well struck again by Ergamal. Well, this now a pressure moment for Paige Zoyce, an important penalty to hit. If she does not strike true here, the Mariners will have an opportunity to win it with the next kick. Paige Zoyce, the 20-year-old. It's saved again! Casey Dumont, the penalty queen of the A-League women's. She has saved two penalties in the shootout and now the Mariners with an opportunity to win the first final in their history. Isn't she pumped up? That is extraordinary from Dumont. Two saves and now it is Bianca Galich with an opportunity to make history for the Mariners. Courtney Newborn knows that she has to make the save to keep her side in it. She's been so good, Galich. She's the only player to have started every game for the Mariners. To win the game for the Central Coast. She strikes true. The Central Coast Mariners are going through to the semi-final. They will play Sydney FC next week. Devastation for the home side. And look at what it means for the Mariners. So long without a women's team on the Central Coast. So long with no pathways for female players on the coast. And now, look at the jubilation. They'll be watching in Gosford. They'll be watching in Tuggera. They'll be watching in Arimba. Because their side have won the first ever finals game. It went all the way to penalties. Neither side could get the win on the pitch. Neither side could hit the back of the net. And it is Casey Dumont yet again. Five penalty shootouts, five penalty wins. Full time at the home of the Matildas. It was nil all at the end of the break. And it was the Central Coast Mariners who won the penalty shootout, four goals to two. Well, look at the scenes of celebration here from the home side. That means the world to them. So many pundits had them finishing bottom of the table and now they have an opportunity over two legs to play in a final. That is sullen faces for victory. It happens in penalty shootouts. It's a close game. They'll get around their penalty takers who weren't able to succeed. It is a fact of life. It is a fact of finals football. And that huddle is substantially happier for the Mariners. I'll be going home knowing 
that they'll be taking on Sydney FC. They'll have the home leg first, the away leg second. Those are some happy, happy faces in that huddle. Here's a replay of the decisive moment. Bianca Galich stepped up, cool, calm, collected, and tucked it away perfectly. Teammates celebrating, coach celebrating, M husband, 100% record in A-League Women's Finals now as a coach. They've come away from home and they've gotten the job done, the Mariners. And now they'll take on a side who they have not lost to this season or a place in the final. Well, victory, a disappointing season for them in the end a tight game to finish at home a team that was picked for higher honors couldn't get the job done against this fierce this determined this organized this inspirational mariners side well we'll leave you with scenes of mariners jubilation celebrating with their fans in melbourne what a night of football 120 minutes and these teams could only be separated by penalties my name is taryn Hedo. it has been an absolute pleasure having your company this evening at full time it is the mariners winning 4-2 on penalties Herself. Still though, plays the ball across. Privatelli with the shot. This is this afternoon. Here come the Mariners on the attack. Ball out wide to Kai Sai. This is this afternoon. Here come the Mariners on the attack. Ball out wide to Kai Sai. Here come the Mariners on the attack. Ball out wide to Kai Simon, who shoots first time over the. Here goes Alana Murphy with the free kick. Morrison. Here goes Alana Murphy. With the free kick, Morrison.
for Emily Gilnick out there, the informed Gilnick, but suffered a calf injury. For Emily Gilnick out there, the informed Gilnick, but suffered a calf injury during a Matilda's call up. But here's the Mariners. Ergamal takes a shot during a Matilda's call up. But here's the Mariners. Ergamal takes a shot on her. Here comes Bryson on this right edge, looking to whip in a ball, perhaps catch out. The this right edge looking to whip in a ball perhaps catch out she go herself still though plays the ball across Privet Sally with the shot needing support here or will she go herself still though plays the ball across Privet Sally with the shot this is this afternoon here come the Mariners on the attack ball out wide to Kai Sainz this, this afternoon here come the Mariners on the attack ball out wide to Kai Sainz here come the Mariners on the attack. Ball out wide to Kai Simon, who shoots first time over the... Here goes Alana Murphy with the free kick. Morrison! Here goes Alana Murphy with the free kick. Morrison! Those high crosses. Here's Martin. Ball through to Ergamal. Ergamal, early opportunity here for the Mariners. Cuts inside from the byline towards the back. Ergamal, early opportunity here for the Mariners. Cuts inside from the byline towards the back post. Nataweya running onto the ball. Goes for the cross. Deflection and Ergamal. Nataweya running onto the ball. Goes for the cross. Deflection and Ergamal. Hits it over. That, that's a beautiful ball over the top to Leah Privatelli, who's got an opportunity but can't get there in time. Now Chidiak with a strike. That's a beautiful ball over the top to Leah Privatelli, who's got an opportunity but can't get there in time. Now Chidiak with a strike! Still unmarked in acres of space. She'll deliver in a ball towards the back post. Trimmers! Still unmarked in acres of space. She'll deliver in a ball towards the back post. Trimmers! This is the return of Gilnick to the side. Now here she is straight away on the ball. Correa Aquino battling forward. Rachel Lowe. One, two, Rachel Lowe! It's gone over the top. Correa Aquino battling forward. Rachel Lowe. One, two, Rachel Lowe! It's gone over the top. Can it be? And now the Mariners driving forward. Here's Ergamal. Can Ergamal get there? She can. She shoots. Straight at Newborn, but another opportunity. The Mariners driving forward. Here's Ergamal. Can Ergamal get there? She can. She shoots. Straight at Newborn, but another opportunity. And Ergamal. And she has to make the save to keep her side in it. She's been so good, Gallage. She's the only player to have started every game for the Mariners. To win the game for the Central Coast. She strikes true. The Central Coast Mariners are going through to the semi-final. They will play Sydney FC next week. Devastation for the home side. And look at what it means for the Mariners. So long without a women's team on the Central Coast. So long with no pathways for female players on the coast. And now, look at the jubilation. Knows that she has to make the save to keep her side in it. She's been so good, Gallage. She's the only player to have started every game for the Mariners. to win the game for the Central Coast. She strikes true. The Central Coast Mariners are going through to the semi-final. They will play Sydney FC next week. Devastation for the home side. And look at what it means for the Mariners. So long without a women's team on the Central Coast. So long with no pathways for female players on the coast. And now, Look at the jubilation. They'll be watching in Gosford. They'll be watching in Tuggera. They'll be watching in Arimba. Because their side have won the first ever finals game. Knows that she has to make the save to keep her side in it. She's been so good, Gallage. She's the only player to have started every game for the Mariners.
to win the game for the Central Coast. She strikes true. The Central Coast Mariners are going through to the semi-final. They will play Sydney FC next week. Devastation for the home side. And look at what it means for the Mariners. So long without a women's team on the Central Coast. So long with no pathways for female players on the coast. And now, look at the jubilation. They'll be watching in Gosford. They'll be watching in Tuggera. They'll be watching in Arimba. Because their side have won the first ever finals game. It went all the way to penalties. Neither side could get the win on the pitch. Neither side could hit the back of the net. And it is Casey Dumont yet again. Five penalty shootouts, five penalty wins. Full time at the home of the Matildas. It was nil all at the end of the break. And it was the Central Coast Mariners who won the penalty shootout. Four goals to two. Well, look at the scenes of celebration here from the home side. That means the world to them. So many pundits had them finishing bottom of the table and now they have an opportunity over two legs to play in a final. That is sullen faces for victory. It happens in penalty shootouts. It's a close game. They'll get around their penalty takers who weren't able to succeed. It is a fact of life, it is a fact of fight.